One of the most important elements of a pro wrestler's finisher is that it should match their character. Legendary moves such as the Tombstone and Pedigree were all perfect fits for The Undertaker and Triple H, and it's hard to see them using any other finisher. Unfortunately, there are those times where a wrestler's finishing move just doesn't represent their persona, and fans are left wondering why they're using that particular move as their finishing maneuver. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 10 WWE finishes that never match the wrestler. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number 10. The Great Khali Brain Chop The Great Khali used several different finishes during his time in WWE. However, it was the Brain Chop which was an awful fit for the former world champion. This move would simply see Kali chop his opponent on the head and it received virtually zero crowd response, as the crowd thought it was a generic strike. This move had no business being a finishing move and it didn't represent Kali's imposing character. Thankfully, this finisher would soon be fizzled out and Kali would expand his moveset. Well, we use the term expand loosely. He would later use moves such as a Punjabi plunge and a devastating vice grip hold which were considerably better. Number 9. Eva Marie Slice Bread It's well established that Eva Marie wasn't exactly the greatest wrestler in the world and her gimmick was detested by the fans. Due to Eva's limitations in the ring, it would have made perfect sense to give her a move that hid her shortcomings. But for some reason, WWE decided to make the slice bread Eva's finishing move. This move can be executed really well, but it needs some degree of athleticism and skill to make it work. Her version of the finishing move was truly awful as Eva had no clue what she was doing and looked like she was performing the move in slow motion. They should have given her a basic move such as a DDT as she had no business delivering a move such as a sliced bread and it didn't even match her persona. Number 8. Heidenreich – The Power Dunk One of the most infamous stars of the Ruthless Aggression era was Heidenreich. Heidenreich's character was that he was an utter psychopath but he had a soft spot for hateful poetry. He would often come to the ring in a straight jacket and this was supposed to imply to the audience that he was a wrestler that was incredibly sinister and a wrestler that they needed to take very seriously. But the main issue with Heidenreich was that his in-ring skills were subpar and even when wrestling all-time great The Undertaker, he was incredibly lacklustre in the ring. He would use a finisher known as the Power Dunk and this was basically a sidewalk slam. For a man that was supposed to be a legitimate psychopath, a standard sidewalk slam wasn't going to cut it. His finisher should have been menacing, but his finisher was incredibly generic and it was a poor fit for a man that was feuding with The Undertaker. Hayden Wright would eventually add two more moves as an alternative finishers, those being an overhead gut wrench and a chokehold, and these were vastly better, but it was still the power dunk that was often chosen as his default finishing move. Number 7. Madcap Moss – The Punchline Upon Madcap Moss being paired with Baron Corbin, he would use a neckbreaker as his finisher. This move would be known as the punchline. Moss's character at this point was that he was a comedian and would tell jokes. This gimmick wasn't the best and it wasn't before long that WWE decided to do something new with Moss and a split between him and Corbin would ensue. The problem was that once Moss had drifted away from Corbin, he was still using his old finisher with the old name which made no sense whatsoever. Number 6. Wade Barrett – Wasteland in the year 2010, WWE had huge plans for Wade Barrett. Barrett had won the inaugural season of NXT and it looked like he was going to be the next top heel in the company. Barrett had a great look and a decent moveset, but it was his finisher that was letting him down. Barrett's finishing move would be called the Wasteland and it would involve Barrett lifting his opponent in a fireman's carry before awkwardly rolling them to the mat with little to no force. For a character that was leading an invasion of WWE, this really didn't work as the move lacked credibility and it was hard to believe that this move was even hurting anyone. It was a few years later in which Barrett debuted the Bullhammer Elbow which was a much more satisfying move and a perfect finisher for his persona at the time. The Bullhammer would have arguably worked during Barrett's days as the leader of the Nexus and it's hard to argue against that notion that Barrett's initial finisher the Wasteland was a major factor in his failure to become a certified main eventer in WWE. Number 5. Charlotte Flair – Natural Selection Charlotte Flair choosing the figure 8 as a finishing move was an incredibly smart decision. The submission move is perfect for a character in in-ring style, but it's her alternative finisher known as the Natural Selection that has a less than stellar reputation. 
The natural selection is a forward somersault cutter and it looks incredibly underwhelming as a finisher and doesn't link remotely to Flair's character. It's no doubt logical that a wrestler who has a submission based finisher also adds an alternative finisher and this is so their victories don't always end in submission. But was the natural selection the best option for the decorated star? Number 4. Mark Henry – Well Stronger Slam For someone whose entire gimmick revolved around his strength and brutality, Mark Henry's finisher was always such a massive letdown. Henry initially used a big splash as his finisher and whilst this was generic, a man of Henry's size performing a splash was perfect for his persona. The Well Stronger Slam finisher was just a power slam that marketed extremely well. The name and branding of the move was tremendous, but the move just never had a sense of finality. Even when Henry won the world title with a move in 2011, it just seemed odd that this was the finishing move that won a wrestler a world title. WWE did attempt to change Henry's finisher around 2006 and he would begin to use a bear hug, but this didn't work for a ruthless aggression era style audience, so the world's strongest slam was quickly reintroduced. Number 3. The Miz Figure 4 Leg Lock In 2013, WWE ran a brief storyline in which Ric Flair began to endorse The Miz. During this often forgotten storyline, Miz would begin to use the figure 4 leg lock as an alternative finishing move. The problem was that this didn't remotely match The Miz's character. The Miz wasn't a technical submission mastermind, so it's unclear as to what exactly WWE were thinking with the idea. The Miz has continued to use the move over the past decade and he notoriously continues to apply it incorrectly. It's a poor fit for The Miz and it's a good job that this has remained as an alternative finisher as the skull crushing finale is a considerably better option for the former WWE Champion. Number 2. Chris Jericho – The Breakdown Speaking of the skull crushing finale, in 2001, the legendary Chris Jericho debuted a new finisher known as The Breakdown, which was in essence an early version of The Miz's finishing maneuver. The move, whilst being okay for a standard transitional move, wasn't really the right fit for Jericho's character. WWE did attempt to get the move over and Jericho would win his first world title with the move at the No Mercy pay-per-view in 2001, but this did little to get fans to accept the move as his new finisher. The balls of Jericho and the Lion Salt were embedded as finishers for Jericho and both of these worked whether he was a heel or a babyface. Jericho and WWE soon realized that the move wasn't the right fit for his character and the move would gradually be removed from his repertoire. And number 1. Braun Strowman – Power Slam One of the things that's always been holding Braun Strowman back is his finishing move. Strowman used the running power slam as his finisher and it just looks completely lifeless. Strowman is one of the biggest stars on the entire WWE roster and it's baffling that a man of his size and a man that is supposed to be a monster uses a power slam as his finishing move. Strowman's character should have moves similar to the likes of Kane in the Big Show and a chokeslam style move for Strowman would be a smart option. Strowman has used the power slam finisher for years and it never seems to receive a crowd response as it's just a standard move that's been chosen as a default finishing move. Even when Strowman won the Universal title with the infamous move in 2020, WWE booked him to use his finisher a dozen times on Goldberg to get the win. This was likely because it wouldn't have been logical for a single move of this nature to pin Goldberg. WWE should look to rework Strowman's finisher as there are a ton of options and it's about time that he finally had a finisher that was fitting for his larger than life persona. But there you have it folks, 10 WWE finishes that never match the wrestler. Be sure to leave your comments down below and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.